Yeah. All right, welcome everybody to another BD Boxing Transmission. This is your host, Mr. BDA, and I sure am glad that everybody could be on board for this one. Now, we want to take a look at the upcoming Terence Crawford versus Israel Madrimov fight taking place on August the 3rd. Let's get down to it right off the bat. Israel Madrimov has a title over there at 154. He has less than 20 fights, but he's fought some solid opponents, so we're going to take a look at that. The first thing that is apparent with Israel Madrimov is he can crack. I mean, listen, before we get to the skills and the... the, the, the the technique aspect of it he's got power and that's something that you're gonna need if you want to be the guy like Terence Crawford you need to have physical talent whether it's explosiveness hand speed agility world-class reflexes you need something outstanding to beat this guy not just technique and that's what Madrimov brings to the table and I want to emphasize that he got off to a quick start in his career in his fourth fight he took on Alejandro Barrera who I don't know if you guys remember but uh, he gave Errol Spence a young up-and-coming Errol Spence a very tough fight and I think it took uh, Spence a couple of rounds to soften the guy up and beat him Meanwhile, uh, Madrimov comes in in only his fourth fight and has an easier time against Barrera than Spence did, so right off the bat he made a mark. I just want to make a note here though that he continued scoring some stoppages, but he fought a guy by the name of Eric Walker, who's more sort of like a, a fringe contender. Now this was during the pandemic in 2020, and that should have been a stoppage win for Madrimov. I don't know what the referee was doing, it was one of the worst calls ever. Madrimov caught him with a whopper of a left hook. and. The referee called it a slip and gave Walker a whole bunch of time to recover, but that should have been a stop. Anyway, Madrimov proceeded to, to beat him up and ended up winning a decision. Uh, he did go the distance against a very tough African by the name of Emani Colombo, who is undefeated. Uh, and then the other time he went the distance was when he fought a guy by the name of Rafael Ibogwe. Uh, but he beat that guy up as well, but couldn't stop him. So I understand some people look at it and say, hmm, if you can't stop those two dudes that I've never heard of before, how does he stand a chance to beat the great Terence Crawford? Well, today we're going to take a look at how Majumov beat one of his best opponents so far, and that is the underrated Michel Soro, a Frenchman. A long, tall, he's pulled a couple of upsets in his time, he went the distance and he gave Brian Castaño a very tough fight, lost by split decision, he also lost by split or majority decision, I think, to Magomed Kubernov. That's another guy we're going to get to in another video because he's connected to with Majumov. And uh, he also, uh, like I said, he pulled an upset a couple of years ago when he fought Glenn Tapia. So this is a very tough dude. I mean, the guy can actually crack. If you look at his record and you look at his performance, the guy can crack. And so we're going to take a look at here at the two fights that Majumov had with Soro. We're going to take a look at some of the strengths, some of the weaknesses, and how he tweaked some of that in the rematch. So let's get started. All right, so we're just going to take a look at here some of the highlights that I've compiled. And you can see right away here Majumov moving quite a bit. Uh, see there, getting hit with the right hand, overextending there with that jab, overreaching. Not good. And you can see Soro, his style is classic style, well schooled, hands up. He's got a good sort of like a guard, turtle shell. Not quite a turtle shell or ear muff, but see, like it reminds me a little bit of Ike Corte or Tony Harrison, the way he stands. And very well schooled, doesn't waste a lot of movement. Meanwhile, imagine over there. There you see him overreaching there again, quite uncertain how to close the distance, moving a lot from those few jabs that Majumov threw, excuse me, that Soro threw. But here he starts finding his range a little bit. And you can tell that before he was overreaching, moving away way too much when uh, uh, Soro was throwing his shots. Now he's trying to find an opening here. He jabs, a oh, little feint there, kept, uh, what's his name, uh, Soro guessing. Then another jab, then a, just a light tap there, throw away shot, and it sent him off for a left hook. Not the biggest left hook, you know, it was half blocked, but he got there. So he's he knows how to create openings. There's, he starts flashing that jab, although he took one jab as well. Again, overreaching here. There he cut him with an overhand right. Jabbing to the body now. Uh, but see that? Gotta watch out. Let's replay that here, just in real time. This is something that he's gonna have to watch out for against Terence Crawford. Like we mentioned before, the overreaching. But here he gets a little bit too comfortable here. Mid-range. Wide open here with that left hand extended. He's loading up on the right hand. A guy like Crawford, he has one of the fastest counterpunch triggers in boxing, as we saw against Errol Spence and against other opponents. He will counter with three, four shots, uh, hard shots, as, as soon as he sees you over committing. So here, not only is he over committing, but he's way too open, like I said, in the mid-range. Gets clipped with a with a and cuffed there with a with a shot. It lands his own shot, but then it just stays there, allowing uh Soro to, to get his pound of flesh back can't risk doing that against Terence Crawford. Now you see him here trying different things. He's jabbing to the body, jabbing upstairs, throwing uh, rights downstairs, coming in with overhand rights. He ate a shot from Soro earlier. See, he's tapping the body now. So he's getting a little bit more relaxed seemingly. 
but it still doesn't seem all that comfortable. There are a lot of a lot of excessive movement there. Uh, let's just have a, a gander here. Rewind. See, they're wide open there, a little bit too relaxed. Lack of guard. Here he jumps in, and look at that, he sort of, what's he doing here? Jab to the body, and then sort of he tries to go for a clinch, then thinks twice about it. Gets tangled there, you see that in between the legs. And then goes, finally go, decides to go for a clinch. Good defense there. Starts settling down a little bit more. Eating some jabs, see the lack of guard, but look at that, see that? This is what I like to see as we as we look at some of his clips here. Like I said, he throws different punches from all angles and he starts improvising. He starts looking for an opening and then finally here, not only is he throwing all those shots that I talked about, he's going through the guard with a lead right uppercut. Risky, but effective. Now earlier we saw him tapping the body. Now he's actually going there with some power shots, left hooks. But see again that, that what exactly is the point of all that wasted so again, he starts doing well here, he's about the fourth round here, but look at that, see again, what is this? Steps back, see how he spreads his feet, changes angles and just runs away, but I mean, what's the point of it? That's a lot of wasted movement, and Sora is not the type of guy who's going to chase you down, so there's no need to be moving excessively like this, he's another lead uppercut, but again, look at this, more excessive movement, I mean, yeah, it looks flashy, you're, hey, you're showing you got foot speed, you got explosiveness, but what's really the point? Look at that, and look at Sora, not wasting any energy he's just following him around saying okay yeah i mean it's, it's, we're still in early in the fight here but you see there majimov starting to pump that jab they're getting to a jabbing contest but majimov here as you can see now attacking from all angles good digging digging that left foot digging two body shots downstairs gets hit with a right hand here again just he's in with soros wheelhouse and gets caught with the right hand trying to count with the right hook oh look at that stun them and again we come back to the power that i talked about so if you just stand in front of majimo eventually he's gonna get to you he's gonna pierce that guard and he did that right there look at how he threw that right hand he made it seem as if it was gonna again a feint just a slight feint goes up with a jab and that guard is still not that closed and he lifts the elbow drives it through boom and you can see there it did the stanky leg a little bit as they say and tried to go for the stoppage jabbing to the body countering with a with a with a left hook there did Majimov, but notice that he got cuffed behind the head as he landed that, got put in place and got caught with a nice right hook and then look at how badly he reacts, he gets caught and looks, look at how much he ducks, it's a lot of distance for him ducking, he felt that, he's jittery, he's not that comfortable yet, he's, he's uncomfortable even though he hurt Soro and uh, this is really the, a big step up for him, which might indicate why he was so disconcerted about what was going on here, uh, as you can see here he's kind of He's getting, he's eating some shots there, although now he, he showed a guard earlier, but then look at that, boom, another booming right hand, got through, opens up, <laughs> sorry, goes like, yeah, yeah, that didn't hurt me, now a nice right to the body, another right upstairs, now he's feeling his oats, attacking from all angles, but he's got to watch out there, again, hold on a second, we got to watch out here, lead left hook, again, he's in, he's in the wheelhouse here, Soro very composed, he's a veteran, he blocks the left hook, and Majumov just stands there for a slight second and oh, oh he was lucky he didn't get caught. How did he yeah, he blocked that left uppercut by extending his arm there, see that? That's a that's you know, if if Soro would have came back with a right hand, could have caught him. And he doesn't want to stay there admiring his work like he did here. Not against Terrence Crawford, no Suri Bella. Now he comes back with some jabs, eats some jabs. Again, they're still in a still a close fight here, despite the fact that Majumov starting to take over. Again, excessive movement right there from Majimov, gets hit with the right hand, eats another jab, they both exchange jabs, now he starts opening up with combinations, but ooh, look at that. Again, he goes back to that straight right to the body as he was earlier, over, I mean, now it's good technique and everything, look how his, you know, his legs aren't spaced, his feet aren't spaced too, too, too much apart, or too far, far apart. He goes into with the right hand to the body, but as he's coming back, oof, he's in place there and in range to eat a nice, compact, on, on telegraphed right uppercut from Soro and he's not gonna want to eat too many of those from Crawford you give Crawford those type of chances he will counter he will counter let's fast forward here um, to the ending of the fight and I believe it was around ninth round again Majimov I thought was winning but it was a difficult fight for him he never really seemed comfortable there he's just <laughs> trying to bust through Soro's guard which I can appreciate if you got power and the other guy's just blocking shots and oh there he wobbled him follow-up attack 
Now I must explain what happened here. The bell had already sounded and this, essentially these are just free shots and then the referee inexplicably didn't hear the bell apparently and thought that the round was still going and so he ended the fight that the bout remained a TKO. This was in 2021 and uh, you know yeah Majumov was on his way to winning it but it was a very close fight and the fact that the round had already ended uh, it should have been a, a no contest really but they decided to do it again this time in 2022 and now we're gonna see whether Majumov was smart enough to make any changes so now comes the rematch between Majumov and Soro and you can see that Majumov right off the bat putting more pressure more confidence here as he's jabbing right from the get-go uh you can see he's he's dropping his hands now but as you're gonna see later on here see he's gonna guard now landing more jabs from the get-go he's winning the jabbing war uh more composed no longer moving excessively or jittery look at that he's now you know people compare him because he looks physically he looks a little bit like Golovkin and facially too now he's looking like Golovkin from a pugilistic standpoint the way he's jabbing the way he's standing there see that He's got the, no, hold on, here, he's got the guard up, chin, nah, I wish he would tuck that a little bit more, because see there, he, he still, he does get hit with it, uh, with that jab, if he would have tucked his chin in a little bit more, it would be bouncing off his uh, forehead, he would also tighten up the guard a little bit, but as we're gonna see later on, minor, minor criticism here, no longer eating as many jabs as he was, now Soros thinking, okay, this guy's improved something, he's not giving me the openings as he was in the first fight, now I gotta start creating some by going, downstairs going behind the guard here again we're talking about Majumov's power so he's been jabbing downstairs jabbing upstairs now he comes in with the lead left hook Maj uh, Soro puts up the earmuffs and boom that right hand breaks through the guard and not just another little example of Majumov's power and then he goes back to stabbing that body with that jab notice the stance there look at Majumov more aggressive now and be one of the reasons why I argue is that he's more confident now is because he's got a guard a guard will do wonders for you. If you're confident that you are defensively responsible, uh, it will change things dramatically. Uh, there he's dropping the hands a little bit there, but he tried to go for the one-two. Some fainting. Soro coming in with the jab. Look at that. Majumov still sticking to the usual diet of um, shots, straight shots to the body and jabs downstairs. Now here's something I didn't like though. Let me rewind it here. When he went to that right hand to the body, see he overextended a little bit. Crawford's gonna create those types of scenarios where he's gonna bait Majumov into punching and then over committing and then countering. That's what he does. That's his MO, uh, Crawford that is. And uh, here again, see that? When he, he dips down, that's good to go to the body. But if he does a little bit too often, see that? Boom, he threw the jab. Soro caught him with an overhand, uh, with a right hand, and then as Majumov went to the body, almost got caught with a left uppercut there. Crawford can crack with both hands, he's got, he has good punch selection, so you're not, you're not gonna wanna give him too many countering opportunities. Maybe not, maybe you even avoid exchanges early on. Good left hook there from Soro, trying something to keep Majumov honest. Again, that one two from Majumov going to the body with the one two as well. Fainting, good defense, jabbing, jabbing. There is, has, look at that, he, look at, he's keeping the nice tight guard down this time. He's no longer uh, uh, trying to pivot around Soro. Uh, a little fainter from Soro. He, uh, Majumov stays composed with the guard and now he says, you know what, I can actually dodge this. Little lean back and actually tries and comes, look at how quickly he transitions from defense back to countering here in his axis, middle axis. Very, very composed, going to the body there with right hand. Again, not eating, not eating the, the feints and staying composed and just leaning back and coming right back into attack mode. Digging to the body, both guys are really... Not, no, the, both guys are class boxers, world-class boxers. They don't want to let the other one take the play away. And now look at that. See now, again, as soon as he starts getting comfortable, now he starts firing those body shots, slips the jab and goes with a left hook right under that elbow there. Feeling his oats. Oh, and then he hurt Soro with that let's just rewind that and see what happened here they both ex they both exchanged jabs Soro stayed there a little bit too long and got hit right a little like behind the head and to the side on the temple which is what the shows that will discombobulate you if you don't if you're not careful and now here comes Majima for the finish keeping that nice distance see that this is what I like to see from fighters when they can pressure but they still remain in position they don't go nuts so he's she hits him with a good right hand, look at it, loaded up on it, breaks the guard and then keeps him in place there and just steps back there. Doesn't run does, and doesn't allow Maj uh, Soro to, to stay away. There's Soro trying to counter back with a, an overhand right. 
Majumov still here confounding and confusing him. Oh, where's, where, where's the punch going? See a jab, throw away shot, and as as well, I see you're wide open here because now, now his uh, sword is watching out for the overhand shots downstairs. Wide open for a nice right hand. Oof, and you see he, he uh, lowers that elbow right off immediately because he fell that shot. Nice composure here too from Majumov. Coming forward, slips and parries and slips the jab, dips down towards his right, uses that elbow to sort of keep Soro in place there, especially since Soro's got those earmuffs, so if you place the elbow there, you're effectively blinding him and keeping him in place, and so now that he's got him there, all he has to do is, he can he could come up with the uppercut, but he sees, uh, for some reason, maybe he saw he was going to come up too quickly, or that he was going to block the right uh, uppercut, so he says, oh, let me just wait again, another feint here, See that? That's why you throw body shots against the guy who puts the earmuffs up. Look at Soro. Oh, he doesn't know where the punch is coming from because of the feint. So he thought last minute it's coming to the body. No, it's coming upstairs. And he, only, you know, good composure there from Soro trying to counter as soon as he got hit. But also a good job from Majumov. No longer staying in position there. He, he dipped back as soon as he landed his own. And then he stays in place, continues pressuring. Continues pressuring. Three punch combo. Look at that. See, now he's switching in a beautiful combination here. He's putting pressure, he's not back foot bitching it, coming forward, coming forward, touch, touch, touch with the jab. Majrum of uh, Soro no longer knows what's coming, so it's a throwaway shot, and then a boom, a, a, a nice stabbing left to the body, pins him on the ropes, actually drives him back, propels him back, off balance here for Soro, and then a right uh, hook right behind the guard, and then comes back to cutting off the ring and putting pressure. Another right to the body, and then upstairs right away, Body shots, ate a body shot himself, but look at that, again, stabbing to the body with those throwaway shots, setting up those body shots right behind the guard. There he ate a shot. Now, this is something, again, though, we can see that Manjumov is more composed, most of the friends, more defensively responsible than he was in the first fight, but he's still, you know, there's no such thing as a perfect fight. See there? He's trading with Soro there and stays there a little bit too long. After that left hook, eats a left a left hook upstairs and is put in place by Soro to eat a right that drives him back, shoves him back. He's got to, again, I, I can't stress it enough, he's got to be careful if he's going to fight Crawford. There's a replay of that right hand that stuns Soro. And then what ended up happening was in the later round, uh, the round after this, I believe it was the fifth round? Let's just see, no, the third round. There was a nasty headbutt, ended the fight, and it ended in no, it ended in a no contest. But I liked what I saw from Majumov in this rematch. Even though he didn't get the win technically, right off the bat, he asserted control of the fight. He asserted and established a rhythm contrary to the first fight. He hurt Soro much more sooner than he had in the first fight. Tighter guard, uh, more composed, just all around good performance for Majumov. Again, even though he didn't go past the third and. It was ruled in no contest. Now, in the next video that we're going to analyze later on in a separate episode, we're going to take a look at one of his best wins against Kubranov in his last fight. And again, we're going to take a look at the composure that he shows in that, some of the things that he's improved over the years, how he's become more relaxed. And we're going to take a look at all of that in that one. So, fellas, let us know what you think from what you saw of Majumov here. Can he beat Crawford? Does Crawford have a big problem in his hands? And is this the perfect stepping stone, the launching pad, to see if Crawford can deal with a guy strong guy like Majumov and perhaps Canelo down the line. Let us know what you think in the comment section below. Don't forget to like, subscribe. Catch you in the next one, fellas. Take it easy. Thanks for watching. Bye.